Hello, welcome to Whiskey Advent 2020. We're the Barbers. Hello. It is day 11. And exciting. So exciting. We have another bourbon. This time it is a Texas bourbon. We've thus far experienced uh, more than one Kentucky bourbon. Mm -hmm. We had some whiskey from Missouri, some whiskey from Colorado, whiskey from Arkansas. Illinois. Um, Illinois. It's a silent enough. Sorry. Um, and now we've got a, a new Texas distillery. I think they started in 2016 called Tawakaro. Um, Tawakaro is a native Caddo word meaning bend in the river. They are um, in Grapevine, Texas in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And they are a grain to glass distillery, a local artisan one. Um, they get all their grains, similar to Rocktown in Arkansas, they get all their grains locally. Um, they do four grain bourbon, so corn, wheat, rye, malted barley. Uh, the product we have here is a cast strength, so it is a very high, what was the proof on this one? 128.4. Which Pretty is high. high. Very high. <laughs> and, uh, this small distillery is making waves. Of course, a lot of Texas whiskey is making a lot of waves. They're winning a lot of awards. Mm -hmm. It's very different uh, for a bourbon, but it is pretty awesome stuff. It is very, very different. Um, it's a Texas whiskey. And Texas generally has a pecan uh, flavor to it that I've noticed out of a lot of Texas whiskeys. Uh, some other big names are Balconus, the TX uh, Distillery. What is it? Firestone Fire, Robertson. Yep, Firestone We've Robertson. We've actually been there. We've been there. And that was a great tour. Well, have you did a tour? No, no. We, it's just a lovely place to sit and Very nice place. get a cocktail. And uh, they make a great old fashioned there. Um, so, Texas whiskey's kind of coming on strong, doing a lot of things. So. And with Texas whiskey, as Blake mentioned, um, Kentucky. It, you know, it's hot enough in Kentucky, and so that helps with the, the aging process. Now, you move further south to Texas, and your aging process speeds up. Yes. So this bottle on the back, it says aged not less than two years, um, and then I, they now have some four-year aged products. But when you think about that, they're going to taste like they've been aged longer, mm -hmm. simply because of the heat and that sort of more angel share so a lot of people know about angel share it's the the part that evaporates, evaporates out of the barrel <laughs> and so generally you have only 70 percent left of the barrel by the time you're bottling it anyways uh in i assume in climates you get less probably like less so and to this being a cast strength so it, it's gonna it's quite strong and punchy um they um so if you notice i was just reading their bottle is it's unique. It's shaped like an old school military canteen. And the um, the reason for that is you need you need water to live and you also need whiskey. And I <laughs> thought that was cute fun fact. I you know, agree. Shall we Shall give we? it a sniff? Let's give it a sniff. It definitely if you I don't know you can see here, it's beautiful dark amber color, so you know it was getting even though it's aged not less than two years. Um, but I think the distillery's only been open since 2016, so now more than four years. So this could be uh, it, was, it could be a small barrel or something like that, which means it could be even aged even faster. So the age statement really doesn't matter. This is cast strength and punchy. And yeah, and did we say it's 128.4, yeah, which is it's up there. a very high proof. And on the nose, you can get some... Pecan, now that he mentioned, you know, he mentioned pecan, I'm getting pecan, getting some dried fruits. I get fig, and, and honestly, I get this cardboard note. Um, Which I don't get. It's like a, like a fermenting cardboard. It's not bad. It's not unpleasant, necessarily. Fermenting cardboard. Uh, definitely fig. Definitely fig. I feel like definitely fig's fig. a very common bourbon. Yeah. But flavor. this especially is like just yeah, punching that fruity, them out. Okay, I'm gonna taste because, it, and you can, you can tell that it's a high alcohol content. Mm. It's strong. Very strong. Very spicy. Black pepper. And fruity. Fruity. Mm. I don't get any cherry and vanilla. 
I get a slight bitterness, not too much. But it's more of the, as it's going down, I'm getting a little bitter in the back of the throat. It's um, strong. It's very strong. <laughs> it's very good because it's got such a prominent um, dried fruit note that the strength with that dried fruit really makes you think that you're eating, drinking something, <laughs> eating something like uh, very Christmassy, but a very because it's, it's got spice yes, too. Yes, it's a very stout um, flavor. And it just feels like something you would, like a, like a hot cider that you would drink that's real strong or something that's really a pie that you don't normally have. That's kind of the, the so idea that I get. It's a special occasion bourbon. It's a special occasion. Um, it's, it's not boring. It's not bland. It's quite oh no. flavorful. It's so different. Compare that to what we had last night. It almost night. has a smoky, um, <coughs> I know, like a smokiness to it. Like a smoked cheese almost oh. that you're kind of putting with that, that fig. So essentially we need to get a cheese board with some, yes. some smoked Gouda, smoked yes. cheddar, mm -hmm. some figs, fresh and dried, and some, some tabacaro. Yeah. It's... I'm getting a I hug. keep going back to it because it's and like this is kind of the first time in probably many years, and I've been drinking whiskey a long time. Probably the first time in many years that I've kind of like, ooh. Uh, well, it's 128. Right, but even that Larceny was over 120. It was 122. And it's not like this. And this, this is, is pretty intense. This is very intense. My very mouth is good. numb. My chest is warm. Yeah, but I don't normally get a. If I'm getting a hug, it's a small little Kentucky hug. Are you getting a I'm getting a big, big, a big hug here this time. Slobbery Kentucky yeah. hug here. I would like to go tour this distillery. A, yeah. because we like to go to distilleries. B, I like those small ones where people are so passionate about what they do and they kind of switch careers to make whiskey. Yeah. Um, what are you getting on the finish? Just a little, a little sweetness, a little bitterness, and I'm my my throat and mouth has got that you know <laughs> numbing the front yeah. from the alcohol, which I suppose can't be uh, ignored. I think on the finish for me, it's it's that syrupy. I'm kind of getting like a syrupy flavor, um, like a real molasses, but something real, something. Mm. Yeah, there's some molasses, you know, because I think molasses is another thing I. I tend to pick up frequently in in whiskeys because molasses is kind of sweet and bitter and so a lot of bourbons whiskeys tend to be sweet and bitter and just got that sort of it's like a raw depth. syrup I'm, I'm getting it now again like a raw syrup it is just Pour it's not some pancakes well, no, I mean, when I think raw syrup, I don't think of like what you pour in your pancakes, the sugary, just yeah. stuff. I think of something a little more bitter that's coming right from the tree and it's got sweetness to it for sure, but it's real raw. It's It's got a- Peppery. This has a funk. Pepper. Yeah. Pepper, yeah. This has um, a funk to it. And maybe it is that cardboard note that I'm getting that's kind of blending with that funky. I, I, I really would love to try this with some cheese. And probably some chocolate, uh, but not too sweet because it's got that fig flavor. It, it's punchy and sweet. I would I would like to try it with some dark chocolate and some cheese to you really. Know, I think it would actually pair well. You, you know, even oh, with yeah. a with a strong cheese mm -hmm. or a sweet, even a sweet chocolate because it's got enough. To, I mean, it's got sweet. It's got spice. It's got bitter. Um, I think it would pair well with strong flavors even because it could hold up to it and, and yeah. probably they could complement each other. And this is the only bottom, bottle we have. I wish we had more of their stuff. And you go to the website, they don't have a lot. They've got one four grain bourbon. They've got a four grain bourbon and, and the they've got a rye. And I don't even know where this uh, lines up. In it. I got this from Encore here okay, locally one of our, in, in his, Rogers, his Arkansas. Um, I think maybe this is a pick or a special selection that they was sent to them. And I kind of get first choice on a lot of that stuff from the guy there that, that hooks me up. But anyway. But it does, it does. You know what, I'm curious now. I want to go buy 
their other two products to see how they are because Especially a, their rye malt. Uh, I love rye. Like, yeah. And four grains intriguing too because Very. you know we like rye, we like we we like it all. Who are we mm. kidding? But it's fun to compare because the difference it kind of between makes the weeded a, and, yeah. the, and the, the high rye bourbons versus the weeded bourbons. It's fun to compare those two. And, and a four grain, does that make it a more of a yeah. balanced taste? I, I generally think it does. The more the four grains that I've had. Anyway, cheers. Cheers.